This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Florida. I'm here with Food Service Institute. Since 1989, they have provided food safety and food service management training, leading to the certifications which enhance your company and their careers. I'm joined by Ed Manley, who is the founder and president. Thanks so much for joining us here today, Ed. Thank you, Gary. Pleased to be with you. Excellent. You have served over two decades in the Navy, retiring as a lieutenant commander. You've been a food service director as well as president of the International Food Service Executives Association for 18 plus years. In 2003, you began teaching and really traveling around the world doing certification training from Camp David to Camp Victory, from Iraq to the White House, uh, many places in between. Why don't you share with us a little bit how you how you began in this industry? So my uh, job in the Navy was a hospital corpsman. And uh, when I, um, 11 years later, when I got a commission, they said, what do you want to do? So the guy sitting next to me in our commissioning class said, well, you know, if you get in food service, they might send you to Cornell to the hotel school. Well, that's pretty good. So I did that. So I... Um, I was running the radiology department at Bethesda Naval Hospital, and the food service director, assistant director, came open, I guess, and they knocked on the door and said, hey, can I be your assistant? So that's how I got into food service. Um, they then uh, later did send me to Cornell, the hotel school. While at the hotel school, I joined the uh, association, International Food Service Executives Association. Don't remember a thing about it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but when I graduated... Uh, and went to Orlando, my first duty station, uh, they had an FC uh, branch there. And they said, not because I knew anything, but I was a lieutenant. So they said, you know, would you run it? Sure. No idea. But <laughs> why not? Uh, when I retired from the Navy and went to South Florida, they had a branch there. And they said, hey, you ran that one. How about running this one? So uh, then I went up through the uh, FC rungs, became the certification chair. So that's getting to how do I do, how did I do what I do? So I became the certification chairman, and I thought, you know, the military could really use these certifications probably for promotions in the military and surely for jobs when they get out. So um, I took the FC certifications and I pushed them out and got in some military funding programs, and, um, and here we are today, uh, <laughs> about 6,000 students later. That is about, excellent. I mean, you basically haven't left the Florida area, but you've traveled all over the place. I mean, in 2020, we all learned that restaurants and food services were the lifeblood in the hospitality industry. Much goes on uh, behind the scenes in these restaurants and food service places, especially in terms of training. Why should training always be a continual focus for these organizations? Because you don't know what you don't know. Well, we're, we're doing a lot of work with nursing homes now, and they never had to have certifications and specific training before. And there is a, a great gap uh, that they have knowledge they don't have and they don't know they don't have it until we present it to them. So, you know, how do you, how do you get your food costs to be lower and yet the quality to be better and, uh, you know, uh, pricing and how, how do you hire and fire? All that, uh, you know, people don't know if you're just in your little old box and you do what's what they always did. So the training uh, that we and others provide is uh, practical knowledge. You know, how do you price out a menu? Well, the restaurant operator didn't price it out. Somebody did, whoever managed it before them or corporate did, said they don't know how to set a menu price properly to, you know, to make a profit. So uh, it's, it's really critical. And we're m more than restaurants in this business. We're, we're doing something in Chicago, and they were going to call it a restaurant management program. I said, please don't call it a restaurant management program. It's food service. It's, it's uh, the same thing works in hospitals, right. nursing homes, clubs, and restaurants. So uh, there's just it's a very broad uh, industry of what you need to know. To, you need to know more than how to cook. And you need to know customer service, and you need to know uh, the the back of the house, how to keep the money you make. And so it's a, it's a very complicated uh, and difficult business. So uh, certifications and the training that gets you to them yeah. is critically important. 
that is interesting. I mean, obviously more than restaurants, we're talking about food being served everywhere, not only on land, but on ships, you name it. Uh, in the past, you have taught in person at locations from the White House, Camp David, the Pentagon, I mean, really locations across the world and across the United States. Now with technology, is much of what you do also provided online, and has it made it more accessible for people? Yes. So now I honestly prefer to be in the classroom and funnier, and uh, and I can see who's sleepy. Uh, but uh, the event, and because of COVID, yes, I started doing some. So, for example, I had a class in Germany. Well, they didn't have enough students to uh, get me there, uh, but. When we did it virtually, now we had people from four different areas, uh, all military, in Germany, uh, and somebody from uh, Japan in Yakuska, Marine in Yakuska was able to get involved. We had some people from the U.S. were able to get involved, I was trying to get homeless veterans so they could participate. So that's the good news of it, is, uh, you know, it's the same training. Uh, I'm, I'm just more entertaining, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in person. But, uh, but it's um it enables us to reach uh, many more people and give people the opportunity it's not your fault if you're in africa and you know there's nobody coming to train you there so now you can make a personal decision and be on the training the same training i'm doing at camp david you know you can get the same training no matter where you are so that's the plus of it it does work that is interesting. I mean, you're able to serve civilians as well as military. Give me an idea of what types of organizations have benefited from your training and certifications throughout the years. So uh, I concentrated on military because of my military background, as well as what I'm the president emeritus of uh, International Food Service Executives. We uh, created and ran awards for over 50 years for the best ship of uh, food service, the best shore, the best air force, etc. And so because of all my military training, I focused on that. But more recently I've gotten, and, and there, uh, you know, I was in Iraq and Afghanistan in, in the middle of the war. Um, well, I wasn't, well, I guess I was in the middle of the war. <laughs> it could have been, they shot at me. But, um, you know, so people in, the, uh, so I'm willing to go. Uh, because I think it's so important that, uh, you know, why should somebody sitting at the Pentagon, they get to do it, or sitting at a desk, they get to do it. What about the person that's got their life at risk? So that's why, you know, I went to, I thought, well, how embarrassing would that be if I got killed? You're not going to let me get killed. So I was there. Uh, we're in big in nursing homes now, and, and I'm really pushing them to get more people trained, making it a, a big discount for the second person. The manager has to be, by law, has to be ours or one other one. Uh, and I'm saying, okay, I'll give you the second one for only $99 because I want more people to be trained because knowledge is power. You know, if you don't know, uh, next thing you know, you're out the door because your food costs are too high and you didn't know how to take care of it or people got sick. Uh, you know, my, I'm most known for food safety. Well, you, you know, you, you, when you watch what people do who've been through food safety training, when you go to restaurants, my family doesn't want to go to a restaurant with me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're pointing out, hey, Dad, look at, look at that over there. You know, look at that person's doing. So, um, you know, military civilians, we're looking at other avenues now. We're looking at doing quick serve restaurants. I'm, I would love to do uh, young people who are incarcerated. It's something wrong. They're, they're in a detention center. And I'm working with a guy now to start doing some training for them. So when they come out, I teach homeless veterans. I did that for years in Vegas. You know what? They have a brain, too. They don't want to get out and get a power washer job because they lose their benefits. But if we tell them, you know what, you can get, you can get the same training. I just finished teaching at Camp David when I first started doing that. So what if I gave you the same training that I just finished giving the president's staff? You'll get the same certification. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Then you can get a good job. So, you know, we did quite a few people that way. So we can help everybody. Really, there's nobody. I had somebody who did 30 years in the business, owned two big restaurants. He called me every day. Oh my God, I love this stuff. This I'm learning so much. That customer service is. This <laughs> guy, thirty years in the business, general manager, all over the place. But he wanted to be the food and beverage director of this casino that he was in, and he thought he didn't have enough credentials to get that. So he didn't get it. He got the number two position, but he got a thirty percent pay raise. They said, you know, we didn't realize. So now he walks into the interviews with all this fresh knowledge from all of our classes. So when I ask him a question, oh, you know, he's thinking, oh, well, we just covered that in Ned's class. So, um, you know, it's just 
gives you more mojo, makes you feel better, makes you feel like you can do this, like I could do that, John. Sure. Right? So it, it just helps. It helps your brain, it helps your company to make more money because you know how to manage the place better. That is excellent. Let me ask you, Ed, before we touch on some of the online courses, is the eight-day course still provided on location? Is that still really the kind of the granddaddy of all your courses? And what does that consist of? Yes, it is. And, uh, years back, uh, when they first started skill standards for the Department of Labor and, and Department of Education, it's called Career Clusters. I was involved. I was the head of a group of uh, all the associations, all the big associations. And we went around to four different cities and asked them, what do you need to know, be, and do? So that enabled me now to, to know what you need to know, be, and do in various aspects of the business. So that helped me to put together the eight courses that we teach now. And I think it's everything you need to know, the basics. My life is, I, I, like to, I don't like, like to know a lot about anything. I like to know a little bit about a lot. So that's what we teach the people, a little bit about a lot of things. So it's customer service. I'm talking to nursing homes. They're not noted for great customer service, but they could be. So take my customer service class, right? We have uh, food safety, of course. We have the HACCP, which is a higher level of food safety to make sure, especially if you're like in a nursing home where you're, you're, you're feeding elderly people who that, that nobody's in there because they're super healthy. So, uh, so we have uh, HACCP. We have um, beverage management. What wine goes with what food is about half of the test and you know, some of the other uh, beverages. Uh, we have uh, nutrition, of course, uh, basic nutrition that's usable, you know, practical nutrition, not to make you a dietitian. We have um, culinary. I thought the military doesn't really know uh, what a garmage, what's a, what's a salamander, you know, with the different terminology, and you need to know that. So we, we have that. We just added uh, recently level two, three for the culinary, and that's the, uh, through Ruby an online uh, certification program certified by the American Culinary Federation. So uh, we can now actually do some, uh, some culinary cooking training uh, through us as well. Um, we also have um, Surf Safe Alcohol, which is how many drinks can I serve you and still keep you sober and how do you yeah. check IDs and everything. Then the Master Certified Food and Medicine Director is 10 questions from each of the other exams that you've already taken. So that's like a final exam. And that's what, when they use the GI Bill, that's what they, um, they use is uh, uh, the MCFBD uh, certification. And so that says you're a Master Certified Food and Beverage Director. That's gonna get the attention of a computer. That's how you get a job today, is with the um, Computers, I mean, with a computer yeah. screening, you know, like Eat and Monster.com and all that. So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, eight days. Every day is a, a class. At the end of that, you take a test. The next day, you um, take a different subject and you get a test on that. And then at the end, the last day, you have two tests. You have whatever the class, the class was for that day. And then you take 80 questions, Master Certified Food and Beverage Director. The, the, the one that everybody loves is the Master Certified Food Service Professional. They call it the holy crap test. Holy crap, that's the hardest test I ever took in my life. <laughs> a lot of math, right? We're, we're all terrible at math, including me. And uh, so we teach them you know, how do you price out the menus and that type of thing. So it's, um, it's in-depth, it's tough, um, but just about everybody uh, okay. passes uh, moaning and groaning through it. but. Uh, Every day is interesting. They, they walk away with just a ton of information. Let me ask you this. When it comes to online um, classes and education, um, the online training, you have quite a few options to choose from. I mean, you have the convenience of testing from anywhere. Yet, how do you ensure that this is honest testing? I mean, can you explain what a proctor is for someone out there that may not know? Yes. So the proctor has to be sitting in the room with the person watching them, making sure that they don't cheat. So the person signs a I won't cheat form, right, which is, you know, it's all about there's still got to be some trust in there. And uh, the proctor can't be a relative or somebody that's living with them. Uh, other than that, there's not too many restrictions. And the proctor fills out a form, says, yes, I will watch the person. And what I say is you're only cheating yourself. If you cheat, and I can kind of tell when people cheat. I have a sense I've been doing this a long time. Uh, you know, if it takes you 75 minutes to answer 40 questions, you have to be looking them up. Right? 
and by the way, you did a bad job looking them up because you still <laughs> failed. Um, but uh, so uh, it just has to be somebody who is sitting with them. Uh, some of the uh, the food safety tests that we yeah. use somebody else for, there you have a virtual proctor. And uh, we haven't, we're thinking about that, but we haven't gotten to that yet. So uh, I wanted to mention too that the, the classes can all be done, uh, study can be done watching my pre-recorded Zooms or also a PowerPoint slideshow. You can eat either one of them. So you don't have to come to a classroom at all. You can do it all on your own, and, and a lot of people do that. I think and they think you learn more um, when you're listening to us. People have said what I say off the screen is as important as what was on the screen. So, you know, the explanation of well, what that really means is kind of a thing. That makes sense. I mean, with test partners like Global Food Service Institute and the International Food Service Executives Association, I mean, in a job search, I imagine these certifications can really help you stand out from the competition. Is this what you found? Yes. As an admiral said at one of the awards dinners we had for the Navy, it's a way to separate. You know, so we all, everybody going for a good job has a degree. What else do you have, right? That's why I say get a master's, right? Because everybody's got a bachelor's. What else do you have? I'm talking to some colleges now. Some are already doing it. That why are you going to college and have the college put some certifications in there? So somebody who graduated from this school, they have a BS. Somebody who graduated from this other school has a BS plus they're a master certified food service professional. Well, when we're going down the list, somebody just told me when they were in my class a Marine. I, she saw me at the military awards dinner last month, and she said, Mr. Manley, Mr. Manley, I got the Marine of the Award for the whole Marine Corps. She got the Junior Marine of the Year for the entire Marine Corps. And the board told her, she said, that those, all those certifications were the separator, that nobody else had that. So that, you know, that helped. Somebody just sent me a note yesterday saying, hey, I got the, I, I had this interview for this job. And the reason I got the interview was the certification that I got from you some years back. So, yeah, absolutely. I've got a bunch of, of testimonials from people who got jobs. Um, one guy works for me now, vice president. He got an $85,000 job 15 years ago. I, I Googled it. That's worth 175000 today, I think. And he got that strictly because he had HACCP, a higher level food safety for a grocery store chain that was having a lot of problems in the whole region. They created a job for him. And uh, he, got, he was hoping for a $50,000 job, got an $85,000 job because he had certified HACCP uh, professional on his resume. So it, absolutely, why wouldn't it work, right? It's, you know, we're all looking at, well, who's got the biggest pile? And right. uh, that's going to college is all about. I would imagine, I mean, all these certifications can make a resume attractive, especially when it's coupled with experience. But I would imagine also that those without experience are likely to get work much faster when they have certifications in hand, they're ready to go. Ed, let me ask you this, as a past veteran and president of Veteran Support Network, is it important for you to give back to your fellow veterans? And how have you been able to do that in the past? So, thank you. That's a great question. Actually, I like to help people in general. So uh, I get people say, I'm 80 years old. When are you going to retire? When I'm changing people's lives. So that's military and others. But because of my military background, you know, that's mostly where I focus. So I've been able to teach the homeless veterans. Uh, they have a brain, too. They pass the tests. And I've helped some of them get jobs after we finish. So, uh, you know, this is life changing for them. Right. So that's a two thousand dollar program I do for free for them. Same thing that I taught at Camp David two weeks later of teaching homeless veterans. Um, I also created some things for uh, active duty military that helped them into retirement. I created a culinary competition outside in the street, outside Marine Barracks in D.C. We did about 16 of them uh, every year. And uh, that enabled people to show their culinary skills. And some of them that are now winning big awards and on TV started with us in, in competing. I created the Enlisted Aid of the Year, which is for the best enlisted aid that work for the admirals and generals. We're in our 20th year of that. I just turned that over to the USO. So again, that's changing for them when they get out. That's on the resume that they were the enlisted aid of their service or of the whole shoot and match. Um, uh, nursing homes now, I've gotten really, uh, my heart is, is in there, struggling so much because of COVID. Uh, I feel so badly for them. 
Uh, I'm happy I'm not one of them, <laughs> so, but I can help them with with the knowledge. With uh, you know, you can do this by uh, getting them the certification they need to keep their job. I have helped yeah. people keep their job just in the last week. Two people that mm-hmm. I endorsed them through the program and I got them certified. Otherwise, they would have lost their job. So um, I think we all need to. I stay in my lane. I help where, wherever I can help, and. Um, Oh, veterans, I, I'm trying to get more classes with homeless veterans. I can't get people to find me homeless veterans. So anybody that's, at, that's listening to this that has homeless veterans, we can do it online. All you need is a computer and a homeless vet, and I'll do the rest. Uh, there's no charge, so um, you know, maybe somebody can help me do that. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate you getting this message out so that we can help more people and change more lives. My point isn't to make money. If it was, I'd have some. Uh, my point is to, to, when I die, I want people to say, you know, that son of a gun was pretty good. That is excellent. I mean, on the website, I see success stories of great jobs landed as employers were impressed with certifications on the resume. Does it continue to be rewarding for you knowing that you're helping the careers of many, yet at the same time, you're keeping the public safely served? Yes. So. Am I passionate about nursing homes? Because the people in there, we teach in food safety, the elderly, who's the most likely to die? The infirmed, the elderly, they're both of those, right? And, and they're around all these other people. So COVID is, is rampant. So I, I, not only am I helping the people, honestly, I'm probably more happy to be helping the residents that they're getting better care because the people know more. I'm like, this is what you do for a living. How can you not know the temperature to cook fish? Right, so now they do. Now they do know, right? So um, yeah, it's very rewarding when I get notes from people. I I may have mentioned. Um, I just got a note yesterday and a week ago from somebody who said, "Hey, I, I got the interview for this terrific job, and the reason I got the interview was the uh, certification I got from you because when the computer is comparing your resume with the job, if your resume says customer service and the job says customer service." Boom, you got an interview. It's as simple as that. And then I try to teach so you remember something. So that when you get to the interview, they're going to ask some questions about customer service. If you don't know anything, you got a piece of paper. So I try to teach knowledge you can use and not more than you need. Uh, and, and so people do, like the guy that got the $85,000 job in Hassam, he never did have it. He took my class and five years later, remembered enough to get through a, uh, a, um, a phone interview. He ran to his books and his notes and read some more for the in-person interview. So it's, uh, it's very rewarding. Um, I've helped lots of people, and some of them, uh, 15 years later, hey, Mr. Manley, I lost my certificates. Oh, you finally figured out those are important. <laughs> so <laughs> That is excellent. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. Um, you can see all the certifications they have available online. Um, if you want to learn more about the food service in a nutshell, check out their podcast. Um, read the reviews they have there as well. Um, I'd say you can see the cost of each course, but honestly, it's not a cost. It's really rather an investment in your future. I mean, if you're the military, um, you can also use the GI Bill. Um, towards some of those expenses as well. Once again, uh, that's a company that formerly known as E.H. Manley & Associates since 1989 for over a third of a century have provided food safety and food service management training leading to certifications. Food Service Institute Empowering Futures. This is Gary Atencia with CNTV and if you don't know, now you know.